Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and today is Transfer Talk live stream. We're going to be talking about Christian Eriksen, some reports suggesting that he wants to return to Spurs. We're going to look at Alistair Gold's update and we're also going to take updates from Fabrizio Romano on the futures of Delhi Ali and Eric Lamella. I'll also be taking your questions from the live chat and having a general discussion uh, about Tottenham's transfers with potential incomings and outgoings on the um, on the agenda. Before I get started, if you are new to the channel and you want more Transfer Talk content plus live watch-alongs, uh, interactive live streams and podcasts, please make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you get notified uh, whenever I upload. And if you want uh, access to exclusive content, make sure to hit the join button and everything will be explained for you there. Um, welcome a few people to the stream. We've got a uh, Larry Leak with a good point. Make sure to leave a like to support Matt. I have DVV channel member, James Watson, uh, Island, Jay Chapman, Darren Grimmer, uh, uh, Rice, we've uh, the Danish yet another channel member there, and 92 flamethrower as well. Uh, so let's dive straight into things. And before we get on to the update from um, Alistair Gold, we're going to look at what Fabrizio Romano has said lately about this potential move for Christian Eriksen. And if I can find where I put this, um, here it is. He said, uh, the, the agent of uh, Eriksen is now working to find a solution with regards to the future of the player. Uh, with regards to Tottenham, he says Mourinho would like to have him back at Spurs on loan, but his salary, which is about €7.5 million Euro a season after taxes, is the main issue. There are no advanced talks yet with Tottenham, but Eriksen hopes to come back to the Premier League. And this seems to be the general consensus with regards to the reports we're seeing, is that Christian Eriksen wants a return to the Premier League. He's found out the grass isn't always greener on the other side, and you know he forced that move through to Inter Milan, which has proven to be to his own detriment and he's he's already looking um, for a return to Spurs. Sorry, for a return to the Premier League. And of course, uh, a move for Spurs is on the agenda. Um, a few people have said uh, his agents have contacted uh, Spurs uh, with regards to this move, but they've also contacted some other uh, Premier League clubs as well. And that brings us into the update uh, from Alistair Gold. Um, if I can just get it up here on screen. And it's, it's one that... It doesn't really go into too much detail. It doesn't give us sort of too much hope that this move uh, could potentially happen. Um, but this uh, update from Alistair Gold from Football London, um, he says any potential return to to Tottenham Hotspur for Christian Eriksen has plenty of hurdles in its path. Football London understands the Denmark international departed Spurs less than twelve months ago for a fresh challenge in Serie A with Inter Milan. However, that has proved to be a disastrous move with the majority of his forty appearances, particularly in the league, coming from the bench. Now Eriksen has been linked with a loan switch back to North London in a bid to end his tough time in Italy with Inter boss uh, Antonio Conte, clearly not his biggest fan. And look, I think that was uh, known from the very beginning. Antonio Conte never wanted uh, Christian Eriksen to, to go to Inter Milan. It seemed to be a signing made by the board. Conte was fully against it. And I, I think uh, it's been proven that the manager was was right in that one. Um Football.London understands that the Danes' representatives have made contact with Spurs, among other clubs, about the chances of bringing him back to the Premier League. That will have presented a certain irony after it was made clear to Tottenham that Eriksen would not be signing a new deal at the club in the years before his move to Italy because it was felt that he should be playing on a bigger stage. And Fabrizio Romano actually confirmed during the last transfer window that there was contact between Spurs and Inter Milan while they were talking about Milan Skriniar. The, the option arose to potentially bring Christian Eriksen back to Spurs last summer. Uh, but that, of course, didn't happen. There were too many hurdles in its way. But this this window, it looks like something that could is more likely to happen. But of course, as as Alistair Gold says, there's a lot of potential hurdles in the way of that one. Uh, in the end, Spurs had to allow the midfielder to leave with just six months remaining on his deal in a £20 million January transfer to Inter. Now, there are a number of potential hurdles in bringing Eriksen back to N17 after finding the grass was not greener. Some within Tottenham would like to see the Dane return, particularly with the lack of creativity in the middle. And that's a massive debate that's going on with Spurs at the moment. We do not have enough creativity in the middle of the park. And Christian Eriksen, although towards the, the end of his time at the club, uh, didn't offer as much creativity, didn't offer as much of anything on the pitch. Um, that is something that perhaps he could add to our midfield, that extra bit of creativity. And, and I'm going to bring a stat very shortly um, after after read this article to show just how creative Eriksen actually was during his first spell at Spurs. However, it is believed that while Jose Mourinho enjoyed working with the player during their couple of months together, he did not see the best of Eriksen during his time at the club. The midfielder's form and confidence have been taken a big fall in the 12, min in 12 months before his exit, and the Portuguese is not as sold on a potential return for the player. That the Dane, who turns 29 next month, has also failed to reignite his form in a new environment and a fresh start in Italy has not exactly proved that he's likely to return as the Ericsson of old, one of the Premier League's biggest creators of chances. Tottenham have also found so far with the return of Gareth Bale that going back to former players is not always the right answer. The biggest problem for Ericsson and any hopes of a Spurs reunion is the issue his old club has with their number of foreign players 
something that existed during his time at Tottenham as well. It goes on to talk there about our issues with um, with foreign players. And look, the, the feeling around the Spurs fan base is is so split on this one. It really is. I can even see in, in the comments right now, some people wanting him, some people not wanting him. Uh, the Danish Shield channel member says 78% of goals against us have been from set pieces or individual mistakes. So maybe the priority should be a defender. But for now, uh, it looks as though Christian Eriksen is what Tottenham are looking for in the market. Uh, Paul Markey, another channel member saying, in two minds could be the missing link, but out of form for two years. Will he get it back? Um, I just want to say as well, uh, channel members will always get priority in the live chat. Um, I'll do my best to leave, read out all of your uh, comments. So channel members and super chats um, will always get uh, will always be read out. Um, just take a look at this stat um, for Christian Eriksen. And it's one that I've, I've, I've used on the channel before, and it's courtesy of channel member Rob Hogan uh, and a friend of the channel as well. Premier League match winning assists since 2015. So in the last five and a half, maybe years, Christian Eriksen, a player who, of course, in the last 12 months hasn't even played in the league. He has provided the second most Premier League match winning assists uh, behind only Kevin De Bruyne. Now, of course, you can you can you can debate the fact that the the bulk of those did come in the early years, but even from 2018 to 2020, he's still right up there. I think second in that list as well. And of course, he's in a fantastic company there, De Bruyne, David Silva, Mesut Ozil, when he was, of course, still getting on the pitch at Arsenal, was, was such a good player for them. But it just goes to show that not only was he creative, not only was he uh, a talented footballer, but he was impactful, he was influential, he was effective, and he was getting the assists uh, and things like that uh, when it really, really mattered. Uh, the Danish should say, no way, I want him back, not even for free. Bradley saying Ericsson is no better than Ali right now, so why bring Ericsson back? Um, there was a comment there a second ago asking uh, my opinion on it, uh, MJH saying, would I take him? Right now, I would take Christian Eriksen. I absolutely would take him because if we can get him on loan uh, until the end of the year, I don't see why we wouldn't do it because we're not uh, making any sort of long-term investment. We're not uh, risking a lot of money and bringing him back in. We're bringing him on loan. You know, Inter Milan would more than likely pay uh, a lot of his wages, maybe even up to half. So it, it's going to be relatively cheap for us. I can't imagine there'd be too much of a, a loan fee involved because Inter Milan are so keen to get him off their books. I think it's it's a realistic one. It's a possible one. And, you know, he's just going to be a, a good player to have around because he he can be that player to maybe come off the bench in the last 20 minutes and change games because even early on in Jose Mourinho's time, he wasn't starting games because, of course, we all knew he wanted to leave. And there were times when he came off the bench and he managed to be that player that we needed uh, to come on and change a game, to come on and get a goal, to come on and get an assist and, <clears throat> and kind of push us through to victories in those games. Uh, Christopher W channel member saying the thing with Ericsson is whilst he always uh, will always be loved by a large majority of the fans he just isn't the same player anymore which is a disappointment for the fans again you can put Deli Ali in that boat uh, you can put Gareth Bale in that boat and it's it's why there is a lot of uh, debate uh, around these uh, a lot of these players at the moment now I did put out a poll on my Twitter about this yesterday there's about two hours left in the vote um, so if you do want to head over to my Twitter and have your say in this one as well uh, please do and I said uh do you take back? Do you take Ericsson back on loan if given the chance? Fifty-four uh, percent of uh, one hundred and fifteen votes said absolutely. Twenty-three and a half percent said not a chance, and twenty-two and a half percent said undecided. So the majority of of my followers on Twitter, anyway, uh, would be keen to get Christian Ericsson back to the club. With just over fifty percent said they'd absolutely take him. But it's interesting to see that the amount of people who don't want him and the amount of people that under, are undecided are very very similar, with just one percent in between there. Um, so. Look, I think that the the split in my in my live comments on YouTube and my comments and videos on YouTube seems to be swaying the other way in that people don't want him. Whereas on Twitter, it seems to be uh, people kind of leaning towards uh, wanting to, to bring him back to the club, which I, I think is very interesting. Um, but we'll have a, a quick vote here in the live chat. If you do want Christian Eriksen to return uh, in any capacity on a permanent transfer, on a loan deal, on a free move, whatever it is, if you want Eriksen to return t- to Tottenham this January, put a yes in the live chat. And if you don't, under any circumstances, want to see him back in a Spurs jersey uh, this season, put no in the live chat, and we get the, the general feeling uh, through here. Now, I am going to be releasing a video uh, in the next couple of days with my opinions on this to channel members. Uh, so any channel members, make sure to keep an eye out for that on the community feed. And again, if you do want exclusive access to content like that and uh, various different types of content throughout the season, hit the join button down below and everything will be explained for you there. Um, so again, channel members want to keep an eye out um, for you there. Caleb said, when I've seen Ericsson at Inter, he is a great player for them. He's playing uh, way better than Delhi at the moment. He, his form really is up and down at Inter Milan, and he's struggling to get on the pitch. As the article said a second ago, he, he's playing from the bench, and uh, Conte isn't happy with him. The, the fans aren't happy with him, and he's not happy there, which is, look, it's disappointing. You know, he he kind of did down tools when he was at Spurs, and he 
you know, he, he lost a lot of the a lot of the respect he had from the fan base. But at the end of the day, he still was such a good uh, player for us for so long. And it, it's disappointing to see that things have turned so sour for him so quickly over there. Um, take a look at these votes. We have uh, PHS saying yes. Uh, Tom saying yes. Paul saying yes. Royce saying yes. Ricky Void saying yes. Loves Music says no. Christopher says yes. Alan, yes. MJH, yes. Joe says no. David says on loan, yes. The Mountie says yes. And Tyrone says no. Rune says it depends. Risky Void saying alone, yes, not permanent. And Freddie and David also saying yes. So I'm actually surprised to see a, a very different sort of answer to what I usually have on my channel with people saying, uh, the majority of people there saying they would take him. So across Twitter, across YouTube, and my following anyway, uh, it seems as though the answer is yes. James says yes as well. Bradley says yes, I would have Ericsson back, but only on a loan deal, only then uh, find a, a permanent replacement in the summer. And the Danish year says no. And that that's I, I'm in the exact same boat as you, Bradley. I want him back on a loan deal so that he can offer us something, but we're not committing to, to having him there long-term. We're not committing to anything more than uh, an asset that can come off the bench, that can impact games for us. And, you know, it's only for six months he goes back to, to Inter Milan or whatever, and we, we perhaps get a better player in the summer. And uh, <laughs> 92 Flamethrower says, Matt, do you really want him to take our corners again? We can have him without putting him on corners. Maybe keep Regalon and Son on the corners and uh, just keep Christian Eriksen in the middle of the park, uh, pulling the strings from there. Um, uh, David said, I'd like to see if he can rediscover his form uh, and if he does uh, re-sign him permanently. There's no way he, he wouldn't be motivated if he fails on loan, his career will plummet. And that's exactly the case. When he was at Spurs the last time, when he was uh, looking to get the move away, he had no motivation to do anything because he knew the entire situation was in his hands. He'd run down his contract and he had taught them right where, right where he wanted them. You know, he didn't want money. He didn't want uh, more game time. He, he simply wanted to leave. And he knew he didn't have to try because he was going to get his move anyway. He knew Inter Milan were interested. He knew other clubs were interested. And he, he didn't really have to... He wasn't in a shop window, per se. He, he just knew he was going to get that move regardless. And when he comes back, because he he knows his career is in the balance. And he, he's a lot younger than, uh, than than a lot of people think, to be honest. I was, I was quite surprised. I think he's only 28. He's only 28 years. Realistically, he should be going into the prime of his career, or he should be at the prime of his career right now. And maybe that is something he can he can help himself achieve when, if he does come back to Spurs and he can, you know, maybe be that creative spark in the middle of the pitch um, that we're lacking at the moment. Now we're also going to talk in a minute about uh, Eric Lamella and Deli Ali getting uh, updates from them on, uh, from Fabrizio Romano and also a little interesting quote from Jose Marino. But before I get into that, again, if you are new to the channel and you want more of these live uh, streams, plus any sort of content you could want from a Spurs uh, channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you are enjoying this stream, uh, if you do want Christian Eriksen back, uh, make sure to, uh, to hit that like button as well. Um, and on Deli Ali, uh, Fabrizio Romano tweeted two days ago. He said, PSG are very keen to sign Deli Ali on loan. Pochettino wants him and Deli is pushing to leave Tottenham. Now, when Romano was on this channel uh, a couple of weeks ago, he said the very same thing. Ali wants out and he's, he's pushing to make that happen. Uh, he, he respects the club, but he wants to play. He said that I think in the last word on Spurs podcast as well, that Ali loves Spurs but he feels it is it is uh, time to part ways. Tottenham at the moment are not convinced yet and they're taking their time. The deal is not easy. So from a Spurs point of view, we need to keep Deli Alli. Uh, we, we have too many injuries in midfield. Of course, there's the, the chance for our squad to be depleted for COVID reasons later in the season. We've already had a few cases. Um, so Spurs are in a position where at the moment they can't really let Deli Alli go. He still has three and a half years left on his contract. So the ball is firmly in Tottenham's court, but Ali wants to go and and PSG want to bring him in on loan. But I think that is the main thing that's that, that's holding Spurs back. And my worry would be if Delhi did go on loan to PSG and then he, he came back next season and we needed him in our squad, he'd find it so hard to get motivated. Having gone back to an environment uh, with, with Mauricio Pochettino there, I think he'd struggle to, to uh, come back into a Mourinho team, which he's already clearly uh, having difficulty with. Now, Jose Mourinho was asked about Delhi Ali. I think it was yesterday in his, in his pre-match press conference for the Sheffield United game. And he said, I'm not ready to make public my vision of the situation. So uh, Jose Mourinho keeping his cards very close to his chest. He's not ready to make public his vision of the situation. Alexander Hilton, welcome to the stream. Um, he said, uh, Marano says, Jose knows that Delhi wants to go. He wants to play. And PSG are pushing to sign him on loan as reported yesterday. But again, Tottenham are not convinced uh, at the moment. Spurs not convinced uh, that they they can let Deli Ali go. But for those reasons, I pointed out a second ago. The Danish says, uh, let's get Botman. Uh, Fabrizio Romano said this uh, last week. He said, Tottenham don't have any plans to sign 
uh, Sven Botman from Lille. I think centre back is, is out of the question. It's good enough for Spurs unless something uh, progresses with Eder Militao, but he's actually uh, looking likely to. Uh, if he is going to leave Real Madrid for it to be to Liverpool this window. So while Batman is a player I would like us to sign, um, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, Paul saying on Ericsson, he wasn't only creative, uh, scored goals and a dead ball specialist. Uh, Paul saying, I'd show Winks the door the doorway before Delhi. Danish Yid saying, out Lamella, Lucas and Sanchez. Winks in uh, Sabitzer and Batman. And Yuna saying, uh, thoughts on going after James Madison in the summer. He's English and a cam. That solves two of our problems. That's if we lose Delhi. It's, it's not... Um, it's, it's not realistic for me. I, I don't think we'd ever come even close to signing James Madison at the moment. Yeah, but on Deli Alley, he wants to go. PSG wants him. And kind of what we've been hearing um, for so long is that Jose wants to go, but Daniel Levy and a lot of the coaching staff around Spurs want Deli Alley to stay because they've seen what he can do with the club. They've seen him at his best and they feel he can he can kind of refine that form that, that made him the player that we love, that made him the player that was so uh, important for Tottenham. But Jose hasn't seen that. And... Uh, look, I, th- I think, you know, I, I saw a really funny tweet a while ago. People are saying, you know, why does Jose Mourinho not want Deli Alli? Why, why is there, there no love lost there? And uh, they brought back a, a little uh, snippet from the Amazon documentary where Deli Alli was complaining about us defending and just lobbing the ball forward. So I'm sure there is some sort of uh, disagreement between Deli and Jose and the way we play. And look, we knew that was going to be a risk when, when he came in. And it looks like now that is uh, coming back to bite us maybe with Deli Alli perhaps being a, a victim of that. The Danish Shade saying Madison will be will be mad expensive. He definitely would. Um, now, we heard through Fabrizio Romano, um, I believe it was a couple of days ago, that Eric Lamella will be leaving Spurs in the summer. Um, he wants to go back to Italy. And, you know, it was as simple as that. He wanted to go. I think, uh, as, as you saw in a comment there a second ago, some Spurs fans do want to see Eric Lamella move on. But Romano tweeted today uh, at about 20 to 2. He said, Eric Lamella is not planning to leave Tottenham. He had good times in Italy and he's always so appreciated by Serie A clubs, but he's totally focused on Spurs as of today and Tottenham won't let him go now. So I, to be honest, I don't know if if that's kind of a continuation of what he was saying and that if Eric Lamella is leaving, it will be in the summer or if this is kind of a a reversal saying he, he won't leave. But what we do know is for this window, at least Eric Lamella will absolutely unequivocally be staying at Tottenham. He says Eric Lamella is not planning to leave Tottenham. He's totally focused on Spurs as of today. Um, there'll be a split opinion, a split opinion in the fan base with that one, uh, but I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy to see Eric Lamella stay. Uh, Paul saying how right was Delhi in that comment? Certainly, I think there's uh, a lot of fans that are on the the same boat as him now. Bradley saying, Matt, do you think we'll uh, let Ali go to PSG on loan if we bring Ericsson in on loan? And maybe maybe that is an option. Maybe that is uh, some of the club we're thinking about at the moment. And Maybe that's why Ericsson is, or uh, maybe that's why Jose is not kind of keen to, to say anything about it because it, it could scupper our chances in the market if it is someone like Ericsson we're looking to bring in. Now, I, I don't know how the, the the kind of homegrown quota and the, the level of foreign players we're allowed to have works in terms of loan deals. I know Jetson doesn't count as any sort of foreign player because he is under 21, um, of course, which isn't the case with Christian Ericsson. We should to see how that actually works um, if we do get Ericsson in on loan and, of course, losing Deli Alli would, would uh, eliminate one player from that homegrown quota. Yuna saying, yes, please, Lamella out. He's dead, Wood. I, I don't agree with that. I think Lamella offers something that not a lot of the players in the squad do offer because he's tenacious, he's determined, he's gritty. Uh, he has that kind of fight in him that, that we need in our team at times, that perhaps Bergwijn doesn't have, you know, Winks doesn't have, uh, I suppose Lucas does have it to some extent, but there are players in our team that don't have that gritty determination that Eric Lamella does have. And it's in games like, I think he should have started against Fulham on Wednesday. Uh, he he absolutely was not the player to bring on uh, when we went to uh, when uh, Fulham equalised. He wasn't the player to bring on when when we needed a goal. But I think he's the player that we could have uh, starting those games, like you know, like a Burnley, uh, like a West Brom. So he can be that that fiery player to you know he'd be nipping at the heels of the opposition players. Um, I, I think he offers us something that not a lot of players at our club do. So I, I would be uh, disappointed if he did move on uh, this January. But when it comes to next summer, of course, depending on our on our targets, um, I'd say uh, very different. It could be a very different situation. Yuna saying Leon Bailey from Leverkusen is a way better replacement for Lamella, young and, and not injured every other game. That's Lamella's biggest flaw. He's injury prone. That is definitely his biggest flaw. But Leon Bailey is a name that uh, is a name has been cropping up quite a bit in the first answer. I know it was mentioned uh, a few times for um, uh, it, during last summer. Uh, Leon Bailey potentially a pair that we could bring in. Uh, the Danish should saying Bailey is left, wi- uh, left wing, not right wing. Uh, Yuna saying he's right wing. Uh, <laughs> bit of a disagreement here. The Danish should saying uh, Bellarabi plays right wing for Leverkusen. Well, I'll have a quick look at that. 
Um, I'm actually not too sure. I, I would have thought he is a a left winger, but you know, a, a lot of wingers nowadays are so versatile. Like he, could, I assume he can play on both. Um, he, according to who scored, he's a midfielder who can play on the left or right. Uh, this season, he's played the majority of his games on the right. He's played uh, twelve games on the right, or actually fourteen games on the right, and uh, a few on the left. But he can definitely play on the left. I, I know because he has he has played there in the past. But as of this season, he is predominantly a, a right sided player. Um, Celery Agent says, "Are the board and Lewis in this window to improve the team or in it to make a few dollars for their pockets? Uh, more emphasis on the team. Look, it's such a difficult window. It is such a difficult transfer window. There's, there's no doubt about that. Bayern Munich aren't making signings. Barcelona are struggling. Real Madrid are struggling. Um, Juventus are struggling. And this is something Romano was, was uh, kind of hammering down when he was on the channel a few weeks ago. Um, teams just can't afford to, to enter the market in, in ways that they used to. You know, last summer, Real Madrid, it was their, their first window in something like uh, 60 years where they didn't sign a player in the summer. And... You know, there, there are some teams who, who are finding ways around this, who, who seem to have the the, the funds there. Uh, Leeds, Chelsea, Wolves spent big in the summer. But I, I don't think we can be in a situation now where we can criticise uh, the board if they're not spending 50, 60, 70 million pounds this window because January in itself is a very difficult window. We all know the quote from Steve Hitchin uh, in, the, in the Amazon documentary, how much he hates the window. And added to that, the fact that we're going through a global pandemic, you know, only eight, 10 months ago, Spurs were furloughing a lot of their staff. So there, there are huge, huge financial issues there. And I'm sure teams expected to have fans back in the ground at this age, which of course hasn't happened. So uh, a, a huge amount of their cash flow is missing. So uh, I really don't think, I really don't think it would be, it would be fair to, to demand uh, big, big signings this window. But once we get into the next summer, January, the summer after that, as things start to open up again, as fans get back into the ground, hopefully uh, maybe then, Maybe then it will be the time where we uh, see the club starting to spend big. Bradley says Lamella is a typical Mourinho player; likes to run, make tackles, and tracks back. Uh, that's why Lamella is in front of in front of Bale and Ali. Exactly as I was saying, he is that kind of gritty uh, player. He is uh, a, a Jose player, and I think that's why it's uh, it's working so well for him. Now we're on uh, forty two likes, so please can you smash that like button uh, and let's see if we can get to fifty likes by the end of this live stream. Um, Eunice saying uh, also opinion on this uh, we hate on Dyer a lot for being a bad centre back but his natural position under Potch was next to Dembele in the midfield why does Jose insist on changing his role to centre back um, I think Dyer was I think he was a centre back and a bit of a right back when he played with Sporting Lisbon it was Potch kind of saw him as look, he, he did on paper play centre mid but a lot of what he did in that midfield beside Moussa Dembele was when, when the likes of Rosen Walker pushed on Dyer dropped in between the two centre backs and played as a third centre back. So although on paper he did play as a midfielder under Pochettino, a lot of what he actually did on the pitch was playing centre back. Um, but d- look, Jose's always said, excuse me, he sees Dyer as a centre back. He wanted him at Manchester United to put him in their defence. Um, and he said, you know, coming into Tottenham, Dyer was the man he wanted in centre half alongside Toby Alderweireld. Uh, Christopher saying Dyer himself wants to be a centre back. Um, I, I don't know whether that's true or not, but. Look, there's going to be so much, so much to, to debate in the next uh, week and a half, next two weeks, as this uh, Tottenham transfer and moves into the, uh, what we hope is going to be a, a busy pinnacle. Uh, Christian Eriksen, we've been told if there's any sort of movement on him towards Spurs, it will be in the last week or two of the window. Uh, so this story is only getting started. Uh, just to reiterate, a lot of reports coming out today that Christian Eriksen wants the return to Spurs and Football.London's Alistair Gold as well, confirming that Christian Eriksen's agents have offered him or have uh, contacted a lot of Premier League clubs, including Tottenham. Inter Milan wants him out. Christian Eriksen wants out. He wants to go back to England. This is a move that could happen this window. This is a move that I hope happens this window. And judging by my YouTube, judging by my Twitter, a lot of the fan base want this to happen as well. Uh, so look, if uh, make sure, to, again, if you have any few last opinions of this, put them in the live chat. If you're watching the stream replay, put them down in the comments below. Do you want to see Eriksen back at Spurs? And as well, do you want to see Deli Ali and Eric Lamella moving on this window? If you are new to the channel and you want more transfer talk videos like this, plus interactive live streams, live watch alongs and podcasts, please make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button down below. And if you do want access to exclusive content and exclusive access to member call and shows before every watch along, hit that join button down below and everything will be explained for you there. Uh, For now, we look forward to the game tomorrow. I will be joined uh, by David Harris and hopefully Marcelo for a live watch along starting about 50 minutes before lineups, which I think is quarter to one. Uh, and we'll be going for all the way through the game for about three and a half hours, uh, bringing you everything you need to know with regards to Tottenham's game against Sheffield United. So please join us at one o'clock GMT uh, for that game tomorrow. Hopefully we can get the three points 
and move uh, three points behind the league leaders before they play Liverpool at Anfield uh, shortly after that. So again, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, hit join if you want to become a member. And as always, thanks for watching.